guys, welcome back to my channel. So I thought I would finally do my Clay de Poe Full Face Try On Haul. This is a brand I have been wanting to try for a very long time. And uh, a while ago on my community tab in YouTube, I asked you guys uh, what brand you would want me to do like a full face try on haul and Clay de Poe won out. I think a close second was by Terry, which I would like to do in the near future as well. I'm just waiting to see if new things of theirs start to roll out for like end of summer. But anyway, I digress. So I purchased a full face of Clay de Poe stuff. I mean, a ton of stuff. And I just wanted to, you know, have fun and like do a deep dive into this brand that I've always been interested in. Well, anyway, I filmed a whole, you know, kind of get ready with me with Clay de Poe and first impressions and full face and yada yada. And love like 99% of the products I purchased, I loved like love. And you guys have seen quite a few of the things that were part of this haul. So like the foundation, the concealer, the loose powder. Um, and I've used some of the other things that I hauled, but I probably haven't like really talked about them too much. So when I initially did the first try on haul, because I love the product so much, I thought, I don't want this to just be like a loosey goosey first impressions. I want to give you guys some actual like thoughts and my review on all of these products. So I've been continuously using all of these products and thought I would come back, do this, you know, full face try on haul basically, but give you some more in depth kind of information about how I feel about these products and to give you more of like a review. And I just thought that would be more useful. So that's why it's taken me so long to kind of get back to you. So. I'm going to be giving you a full face of Clay de Poe today. I'm going to give you my thoughts on all of it. And Clay de Poe has a very extensive skincare line. I'm not going to be going over that. I'm simply going to be going over their color makeup products. So if you're interested in seeing me apply all of these things to my face and giving you, you know, my thoughts on all of these things, then just keep on watching. So I've tried to hold on to the boxes for you in case any of you guys had you know, more in-depth questions about, sometimes you guys ask about like ingredients and stuff like that. So I've tried to hold on to all the boxes, but I'm so excited to be showing you most of these things because they're freaking fantastic. I'm not surprised. I mean, Clay Depot has an, an, a stellar reputation, um, but you know, I mean, you just figure not everything is going to be for me, but pretty much everything was for me. So I am going to start with the Brightening Enhancer Base. This was, when I purchased all of this, this was a new product. So I would say this is probably the newest release out of all of the things that I've purchased. Everything else isn't particularly new um, or new to the market. Basically, this is a primer that also has a little bit of a brightening effect to your skin. Now, I am usually kind of skeptical about um, things that quote unquote brighten because a lot of times they end up making me look very ashy. Like if the tone is a little bit off, but this one worked for me. So uh, if you shake it up, it has that shaker ball inside. There is no stated SPF on the box. So, and I'm just quickly glancing over the ingredients. I don't see any like zinc oxide or anything in here. So I don't think that there's any SPF in this. Um, it's, this is a one fluid ounce bottle and the top screws off and then you have basically like a squeezy tip. So I'm just gonna squeeze about, it's very, very liquidy as you could probably tell because of that shaker ball. There it is on the back of my hand there. So it has a bit of a kind of like skin tone tint to it, but it's also a little bit on the peachy side. So I'm going to be perfectly honest, I don't know which skin types this wouldn't look good on. I'm going to assume that if your skin tone is very, very cool, like if you have a lot of pink undertones, you're very, very fair and you have like very rosy cheeks, this may not work for you because it's a little bit peachy. Um, but I'm going to show you that it comes out, again, very watery and it blends in very, very seamlessly. So it could work for almost any skin tone. I honestly can't say for sure. So since it's so watery, I just use my hands to spread it around. I feel like if you use a sponge or a brush, it's just gonna kind of eat up the product. And there are dimethicones in this product, so if you're sensitive to that, um, you definitely want to be aware of it. Um, but it definitely gives your skin, you know, a little bit of slip. It's not like super slick kind of like silicone um, type of primer. It's um, It just has like just a little bit. I want to say that it really just sort of smooths out your skin, but it doesn't 
it's, it doesn't go overboard. So there is a very light layer on my face. You can probably see the brightening effect between my face and my neck. My neck just seems a little bit more uh, sallow now compared to my face, and I like that. I do feel like it really brightened my complexion. Uh, next, we're gonna go in with the Clay de Peau V Foundation, and I also find that when I use this enhancer base, that I don't need as much of this foundation, which is great. So I'm just gonna apply this very quickly. I have talked about this a lot. Um, I've demoed it, I think, at least a couple of times at this point. So I'm just gonna apply this and speed through this section. Oh, and I'm using a, a Chikahoto GSN 05 brush. This is like their cream liquid brush. And um, again, normally I would use uh, my Sonia G Base One brush, um, or even my Wayne Goss uh, foundation brush, but those are both um, pretty dirty at this point. I really need to do like a wash. So anyway, I grabbed this one, which is really nice, and I really enjoy it. So you guys have probably noticed I curled my hair, which I've done maybe twice since I purchased that T3 uh, curling wand during the Sephora VIB sale. So I'm still getting used to it. I feel like my hair looks a little bit too full down here. But anyway, um, so there's a nice light layer of the foundation on over the brightening base. And I scooped out considerably less than what I normally do if I'm not using the base. And I still have this much left over on the back of my hand. So I really feel like I use a lot less when I use at least this brightening base. I can't say for sure if um, that goes for every primer, but maybe. So that's been one observation of mine using the uh, primer and the foundation together. All right, next I'm gonna go ahead and use the um, Clay de Peau V Concealer. Again, I've talked about this a gazillion times, so I'm not gonna dwell too long on this, but this is the newer version. This came out quite some time ago at this point, but it's newer and it has SPF 25 in there, and I have it in the color Ivory, which I like. I have the older one in Almond, which um, is like my skin tone, and probably I could use it like on my actual face. So I just sweep it directly onto the areas that I want to conceal. And then I'm just going to use the same foundation brush to spread this out. And with the little bit of foundation that's left on the brush, I feel like it blends it into my skin nicely. This concealer is so great. For something with such high coverage um, that comes in a stick, you know, my presumption is always that it's going to be so thick, it's not going to blend nicely, it's just going to have high coverage, but it's going to look um, kind of cakey. None of that is true for this particular concealer. It has high coverage but the spreadability is better than a lot of my lower coverage concealers and oh, it's just great and never ever ever starts to look dry or anything like that. Sometimes I feel like if I've gone a little bit overboard with my concealer and maybe I've you know brightened it up a little bit too much or maybe it just looks like it's not um, transitioning nicely like with the rest of my face, I'll just take some of my leftover foundation with the same brush and just sort of brush around the edges just to kind of soften the look up a little bit. Otherwise, I feel like you look like you have um, like tanning goggles. All right, now before I go in with the loose powder, I also purchased this Luminizing Enhancer Base. I was very intrigued. I mean, I had purchased this Brightening Enhancer Base and I thought, well, you know, what's the difference? Basically, this is like an illuminating primer or liquid highlighter. It's it's like one of those products. So it comes in a bottle that looks like this and it has a pump at the top. So I first tried to use this product as a base. I didn't think it did really anything. It was so, so subtle that it just didn't seem like it did much. It also has, let me just show you, a very, very white cast to it. So it also did that thing that I don't like where I felt like it made me look a little bit ashy and a little bit powdery instead of what the brightening enhancer base did, which was actually kind of like brighten up my complexion. So I really didn't like this product as an actual base, but I tried it as like a, like a highlighter and you know, it's okay. It's okay. Again, I feel like once you, you know, when I put it on initially, you're like, oh, okay, this could be really like really, really nice. But as soon as you start to blend it in, 
it really kind of, I don't know, it kind of fades to nothing. If you like a very subtle, pearly kind of sheen to your skin, and if you have, I would say, like more of a cooler toned kind of skin tone, then this may actually be a nice highlight for you. But for me, it just sort of doesn't do enough. You know, if I'm going to take this extra step to add like a liquid highlighter, I want a little bit more something. So as an actual base, I didn't really like it because I felt like it was too white, it was too ashy looking on me. And then as kind of like an illuminating, you know, liquid highlighter, I also don't feel like it does enough. I'm just going to put some more just so you guys can see. I'm not sure if you can see it on my cheeks. So there's like a little something and I think if you know you like something subtle this could be great but this was probably the one product in here that I just wouldn't recommend. I just don't think it's worth it unless this is exactly what you're looking for. So next what I'm going to do is use my Clay de Peau Loose Powder. This again is another product that I've talked about a lot. So I'm just going to apply it with my Chikahoto Z1 brush as you guys have seen me do a lot, especially over this past month, and I'll just fast forward through this section. Okay, powder has been applied, so the next product I want to show you guys is the Bronzing Powder Duo. This is good. So they, I believe they have two shades. I have the lighter one. They have a, a light medium and then a medium deep, and here is, it comes in this uh, box. And here is the compact. It is um, very beautiful, but it is very, very thick, which I'm not a fan of when it comes to compacts, but it's because it has one of those brushes underneath. So the compact pops open as, as normal, mirror inside, and then you can actually lift up the bronzer and then there's like a little bronzer brush on the inside. I'm gonna go ahead and use my Sony G Sculpt One brush, and you can see that they call this a bronzing duo because there's like a darker, a corner here and then a lighter one. So I just like to kind of swirl my brush into both. I love the tone of this bronzer and I love the finish. It's not a matte finish, it's just slightly um, satiny. It's just really, really beautiful. So the lighter color in here is a little bit warmer and this one is a little bit more neutral. So I think they mix really well together and then you can kind of customize it even a little bit more. So I have been loving this bronzer. I've been dying to share this with you guys uh, for a long time. So there is the bronzer. Let me see if I can get you some swatches here that you can see. So here's the darker corner and here's the lighter corner. Darker and lighter. Hopefully the camera's picking up just the, the very subtle sheen that it has. It's so natural, it gives your cheeks just the most beautiful, beautiful glow. I just love it. And then next I picked up one of the Luminizing Face Enhancers. So this is, I guess, what you would call the highlighter. It comes in the most beautiful, beautiful compact. Now this is the one that I purchased. This is in number 15. I think it's like Apricot is the name of it. So there's a lot of like orange and coral and warmth to this one. And I already had one of these Luminizing face enhancers and this is in the shade 16 and this is a little bit more of a typical highlight very very pretty there is what you should know because I didn't realize it at first there's an overspray to it so the first time you go into this product it's gonna seem really glittery but the glitter is just the overspray once you get down into the product it just has a really nice kind of subtle pearly sheen let me see if I can I'm just going to run my finger over this entire pan. So this is number uh, 16. Here's a swatch of that. So it's just a really nice, again, subtle highlight. And then let me swirl it in to number 15, which is the one that I purchased uh, in this haul. And you can see it has a lot more pigment to it. So when I ordered this one, I was really curious, like, is this going to work as a highlight? Uh, a blush, a blush topper. So it kind of ends up being like the La Mer bronzing powder, which has a lot of pink in there. And I end up using it as like a blush and highlight and kind of like bronzer buffer. I just sort of use it over this entire part of my cheek. And I think it looks really, really nice. So the first couple of times I used this, I used um, very soft 
brushes like this Surratt cheek brush which I love but this is a product I like to kind of work in so I went up to the Tom Ford cheek brush which is goat hair and that can work the product in a little bit better than squirrel hair. Squirrel hair really doesn't you know kind of buff things in the hairs are too soft so I like using it with a kind of denser brush and so I just pick up a little bit of the product and just right at the top of my cheekbones here I just sort of buff it in like this so where you would put blush where you would put highlight I just put it all over in that area and then down even on top of the bronzer and I think it just gives your cheeks like this really beautiful luminous glow. Isn't that pretty? And it's so uh, summery. And then if you feel like you need a little bit more blush or a little bit more highlight, I find even though this brush is fairly big, you can kind of concentrate it on the either, you know, the lighter part of the pan or the darker, peachier parts of the pan to kind of get what you want. It makes a bit of a difference. You know, when the sales associate tells me that like, oh, you can really customize, I, you know, I look at the pan and I'm like, whatever, you're going to swirl your brush in the whole thing. But you can, if you just dab it right in that spot, you can kind of concentrate what kind of color you want. So I just dipped it into the orange part, the peachy part, for a little bit more blush, and I actually got it. I'm really, really loving this, and in fact, even though this is probably a little bit less traditional, I am liking this number 15 colorway more than this number 16 colorway, even though this is like a very, very beautiful, subtle highlight. I think the 15, it's just a lot more fun, and I like that I can use it kind of all over my cheek. It's kind of like two products in one, uh, blush and highlight, so I'm loving. And you can see that it doesn't give you any sort of glittery sheen, just a nice kind of satin finish. Love it. All right, next let's do eyebrows. So I purchased their eyebrow pencil, which, um, you know, Clay to Pose is a Japanese brand, so they do a lot of like refillable, replaceable cartridges type of things. So this eyebrow pencil, you have to get the holder, and then you have to get the actual um, eyebrow pencil, and this, this thing kind of just twists out or pulls out or something. But anyway, so I purchased um, both pieces, and the eyebrow pencil is like that wedge shape. It's a little bit more oval versus wedge shape, and it also has a spoolie at the other end. I've really been enjoying this pencil because I like how small the tip is. Um, I also like the color. So I purchased, what did I get? I'll list down below in the description box the actual color that I got, and I'll list everything down below in the description box as I usually do. So anyway, I have been enjoying this pencil. It's, uh, it has a very nice texture. It is not too soft, it's not too hard. The color is nice, it's very um, cool toned. So I feel like it has just a really nice kind of gentle application. And I don't know why, I tend to do my eyebrows in such a rush that sometimes I just end up making a mess and if the pencil is too dark or if it's too soft, oh, it just ends up looking awful. So I like kind of these goof-proof, denser kind of eyebrow pencils, waxier ones. Let me actually um, swatch this pencil for you so you can get a sense of the tone here and the pigmentation. I'm not pressing especially hard, but you can see that it's kind of goof proof. But I like this brown. Can you see how cool it is? It almost looks kind of gray. I like that. So Clay de Poe Eyebrow Pencil. Enjoy it very, very much. And then next for eyeshadow, I purchased this quad and this I've definitely used a few times in videos, maybe I haven't mentioned them, but I've listed them down below in my description box. But this is the eyeshadow quad that I purchased. Um, they all have numbers. Again, I'll list it down in the description box. I can't remember which number this is or what it's called, um, but I really liked this uh, range of color. I thought I could get a complete eye look out of here. Uh, there are no matte shades. They're all uh, shimmery and the black actually has like micro glitters in there. So I'm just gonna lay down this uh, third deepest color here. It's like a very minky, taupey color. I'm going to put this all over my lid. And then I'm just going to deepen on my outer corner with the dark charcoal gun smoke color.
I'm going to take a pencil brush um, and use the dark charcoal color and uh, line my lower lash line. So I have also really been enjoying this eyeshadow palette. I think it's really beautiful. I love this color selection. I have another uh, Clé de Peau quad. Actually, let me get that out for you. And this quad I purchased uh, during the Nordstrom anniversary sale, I think last year, but it came in this cool kind of face palette. So there is the quad and then actually a blush duo at the bottom. The quad is very, very pretty. But it's so subtle, I feel like you can't get a complete look out of it. It's so soft. So I never really reach for it because I just, I don't know, I just don't think of it. It's so, you know, kind of just neutral. So when I picked this one out, I really wanted to make sure that I could get kind of a complete eye look and that there was more of a range in tone. So the quality of the eyeshadows, I think, are they're lovely. They're beautiful. I think they're pigmented. They blend out very, very easily, as you can see. All right, so eyeliner. I decided to purchase one of their liquid eyeliners. I don't know why. I don't wear liquid eyeliner very often. <laughs> uh, so I don't know what came over me, but I really wanted to try it. Oh, you know why? It's double-ended. So I wanted to see if it was comparable to the Tom Ford double-ended one, um, which I like. Um, but here is the clay to post. So one end is a brush. And they actually tell you here on the side of the barrel, it says brush, and then one end is a tip, which I'm assuming they mean is felt tip. And this is the side that's much smaller. So it is very, very similar to the Tom Ford setup. I happen to like a brush better, so I'm going to use this end. I purchased this just in straight up black. So I'm going to go ahead, I'm not going to do a wing or anything, I'm just going to line my upper lash line. And I do find that um, this is easy to use. Again, I'm not someone that does liquid eyeliner very often. I'm not very good at it, but I find this very easy to use. So there it is on my eye. I'm realizing you probably can't get a very good sense of it there. So let me do a swatch here for you. So there's the eyeliner, nice jet black, and it dries down to pretty much a matte. Um, it's not shiny. It's not shiny in any way. It doesn't look dry though. It's not like that matte but it just looks very natural. It's a very kind of natural finish. So in terms of comparison, I do think it's very comparable to the Tom Ford. I think it's just as easy to use. I think you get a nice, you know, black line. It doesn't skip or do anything weird, um, but I don't like it as much as my beloved Surat, the autographic eyeliners. Those to me are just the easiest to use. That brush tip is, you know, it's just, it's the perfect amount of like flexibility um, but rigidness all at the same time and the ink just sort of like pours right out. It's it's so easy to use This one is fine. It's absolutely fine. I just like the Surat a little bit better. So there there is the liquid eyeliner applied Let's move on to mascara. So as you guys know, I don't wear mascara very often and it's not my favorite thing but again this was something I just I just wanted to try from the brand and they also had a dark brown color which I really like I feel like it gives just a nice softer look you know it defines your lashes and, and does what a mascara does but it's just not quite as harsh as black so I got the dark brown uh, I'm gonna go ahead and curl my eyelashes and then we will apply it together. All right, I curled my eyelashes. I think that that's as good as it's gonna get. So let's go ahead and apply the mascara. So the wand looks like a kind of traditional bristle tip, average size. It's slightly curved, which I appreciate. It is a Japanese company. So um, a lot of times if there's a curved mascara brush, it's too curved for like the Asian eye. It's, you know, this is nice. This is like a nicer, uh, more Asian eye shape friendly curve. <laughs> so I wore this mascara once before and it was during uh, when I first filmed this. So this was a while ago. And um, I remember thinking that it was very average, um, that it was nice, but you know, it wasn't like, oh my God, you know, didn't like transform my non-existent lashes into something absolutely amazing. Well, I think now that it's been open, I like it a lot better. It's probably, you know, I opened it, I used it at one time and then I closed it. So it's been about a month. I haven't gone back to this mascara since and I like it a lot more. It's a little bit thicker and I feel like it's clinging to my eyelashes a little bit more, which is what I need. When it's too uh, wet, I feel like I just make a mess. But I am liking this mascara more the second time around. 
So there's the mascara. Um, I'm also noticing, I didn't notice this the first time, maybe again because the formula was a little bit too wet, but um, my eyelashes are still kind of curled. Usually within like 10 seconds of applying mascara, the, my lashes just start to fall and it's like useless. But these are kind of like staying upwards-ish. So pretty good. Okay, so I'm liking this mascara a lot more this second time around. And then last but not least, I picked up, I believe, one of the newer colors. So they released a bunch of colors in their Intense Color uh, Lipstick. So this is the Intense Color Luxurious Moisture Lipstick. It's the one that has that kind of petal top to it. I picked it up in color 8 Red Lantern. I think this is relatively new. I have one of these lipsticks in bamboo. It's one of my favorite nude colors. So here's what the packaging looks like, and here is bamboo. So this is a great, again, cool toned, nude, beigey color. So that is the one that I've had in my collection for a bit. I really like it. These lipsticks are incredibly comfortable on the lips. They are very, very moisturizing. The color is it's very saturated, you know, you don't have to go and like build it up too much. But they definitely don't stay on the lips that long, at least not this bamboo kind of beigey natural color. This Red Lantern color definitely stayed on my lips a little bit longer. Here's the Red Lantern color. It's, it's really beautiful. It's like a, a slightly warm red color. So this definitely had better uh, lasting power than the bamboo. But I'm gonna put the bamboo color on because I'm about to meet my mom for lunch and I don't wanna wear like a bright red lipstick and then go eat because that, ugh, I don't like that. So I'm gonna put this bamboo color on. And I should mention that I purchased this color and this lipstick because of Natalie's recommendation. That's Natalie, um, her channel here on YouTube is Flower Bomb 31 If you guys don't know her, I'm sure you guys do. She is, she's hysterical. <laughs> she made every single video of hers, I have like an LOL moment. She's like so funny. So there is the bamboo color. I love it. I love how like cool toned it is. It reminds me of one of my favorite Pat McGrath lipsticks, that Lust Angeles in her Lux Trance uh, formula. Love it. So that's it. That is the whole Clay de Poe haul that I purchased. Uh, with my thoughts on all the products, with them all on my face. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please let me know if you have any questions down below. Let me know if there are any Clay Depot products that I haven't covered that you love. Again, I love your recommendations. They're always so, so helpful and so right. <laughs> you guys are always so right. So give this video a thumbs up if you enjoyed it. Subscribe down below if you haven't already. I would love for you to join my channel and I will see you in my next video.